good pleasant afternoon uh, today is going to be an interesting day i have made a couple changes i want to share with you i am doing a little project today and you're going to want to stick around because tonight we're going to do something really fun uh, after the sun goes down i'm kind of stalling in this video a little bit so hang tight there was something i was going to do today that got bumped till tomorrow but you're going to want to stick around because this is going to be fun anyway and first of all before i even show you this first upgrade i made let me explain to you what my needs and concerns were and what drove me to this so essentially i have the king tv uh bluetooth speaker box thing that i installed outside that's great for outdoor music bluetooth through my ipod uh, what i don't have is something inside that is dedicated like that i do have my little mini fugu speaker and my tailgater speakers but those are both rechargeable speakers they're not something permanent they have to be moved and put away while i drive and along with speakers the tv on this vizio 32 inch smart tv does not have very loud uh, speakers anyway so I have to use one of those speakers when I watch movies usually if I have fans running just to be able to hear the TV volume well why not get a sound bar a Bluetooth sound bar you're gonna want to see this it is a smaller Bluetooth sound bar yeah this is made by LG at Walmart for about 98 bucks it's a 40 watt RMS has regular standard household electricity and it has optical input to your TV so there's an optical Port right there or you can just do regular audio in um, I'm running it through my inverter obviously no problem it has a separate remote to be able to turn that on in case you want to save power or something but 40 watts is not that much on on the road to be real so and it works great but as I've shown you guys it's hard to portray the sound of quality change on a YouTube video when most people are watching from their phone anyway but it works awesome and best yet it's mounted to the wall they're always plugged in never needs to be charged I just sync my iPod Bluetooth connectivity and it bumps in here it's really a good sound there's actually bass somehow in that little bar so um, I know it's meant for household stuff, but so is a lot of stuff in my RV, actually. But I have solar on the roof and a 2,000 watt inverter, 1,500 watt. Did I even show that to you? I did not. I did upgrade my inverter, and I will show that to you. Yes, I went with another power tech on version, but that's because Amazon refunded me, and then I bought a bigger unit of the same one, again, with another one year manufacturer warranty I think so it, it's worth it I, did, I didn't spend that much but in the same compartment as the old one it's a 3000 watt peak 1500 watt so much bigger than my last one and it just barely fit in there but now I don't have the problem of the fan turning on and off consecutively and uh, we'll see how long this one lasts I guess but I haven't had really a shortage of power at all this summer as long as I'm getting solar from my panels on the roof. The only reason I've had to run the generator is to keep cool with the air conditioning. But uh, yeah, soundbar seems to be working well. Today's project. Jax loves the screens in the RV because he can get fresh air. The bugs love to come up here and he'll get his nose on them. He'll put pressure on this. And what's actually happened it's come out right there it's a simple little repair usually but still this material i like to replace my screens in my rv just about once a year just because they get real brittle and they'll have cuts in them and lately i've been having a real problem with main insects getting through these holes they're like tiny little microscopic mosquitoes and they just come right through so i am switching out all of my screens this one the bedroom i'm gonna do all sections of the screen door as well gonna redo all of that i'm parked here at home depot but i don't think i need anything else i got the fiberglass screen material 36 inches by 25 feet long for 23 bucks but see on the label this is for small insects so you won't be able to see on this roll until i get it up but i would say it's more than half smaller the actual little holes in the screen than what this standard household screen would be so just going to uh start on that project and i'll show you a little bit of it as we go so i'm not going to save the old splines even though they don't look like they're in that bad a condition the weather the sun really deteriorates and makes these brittle so i got two more bags of spline just to start over um and just check to make sure you have the right size i guess because some screens could be different there's like three sizes of these not sure if you can see here's the old one you can kind of see how 
how big the actual screen holes are. And here's the new one. It's hard to even see through to the table. So, so much, much different with the insect screens here. So I'm just gonna line this up and leave at least uh, an, an inch and a half around the corners. There's gonna be a little bit of waste, nothing I can do about that, but I'll cut it about an inch and a half all the way around this. Alrighty, then we'll place this on top of the grooves. Also probably a good time to inspect uh, this piece of, of foam here, because that, that protects the hole where they could get through. See how that's coming off? I wanna put some super glue on that real quick. Might as well take care of it all. And then line this up and I'm just gonna put my spline right in here and start from there. You will need one of these spline roller installery thingies, yeah. There we go, getting her started there. All right, came around the corner here, getting ready to do the last little bit. And what I wanna do this time is just pull it a little tighter, taut, so that we can get this pulled as tightly as possible. Just like that. Look how easy that was. Then just to get rid of all the excess around here, I'm gonna use a regular utility knife and I'm gonna carve and cut just above where the spline went in all the way through here. Just make one pass and hopefully not cut my finger off. And there we go. Now we have a nice crisp line just like this came from the factory. So to put this into perspective, here's the new one. Let me grab the one from the back window so you can see the difference. That's from the back window. Does that look different to you? Well, the holes are half the size and it's gonna really help with mosquitoes. I think they're actually uh, repaving the Home Depot lot or getting ready to today or tomorrow, but Take a look at the door, guys. I have replaced the bottom section here with the new screen, and up here is the old screen. Can you see the difference? The, it, it's hard. It's hard to explain, but you know, like the gaps, they're they're double the size with the old stock screen that lets in so many more bugs compared to this, which you can barely even see through. I love it. So I'll do this last square. And then this one, no, I'm not even taking the screen door off because I had to rivet it to repair it last time. I don't want to drill out those rivets, so I'm just doing it outside. You look entirely too comfortable there, Jax. You're uh, crowding Mickey. Oh, okay. Got all my screens done. Pretty, pretty happy with that. Think that should help those smaller main bugs from getting into the RV. As I said, a uh, lot's going on in this video, but I'm actually going to cut it in half and give you the second half later today as you're watching. So come back tonight and watch the rest of it because the other half is way, way cooler. But as you guys probably remember a couple of videos ago, I actually asked my viewers, hey, do you like these longer videos? You guys always ask me for longer videos. Well, here's a 23 minute video. Did, did you like it? And I will say 90% of you said, yeah, always do longer videos. The thing is, through YouTube analytics, I'm actually able to track what's going on and that particular video, 50% of my view loss happened before the 13 minute mark. So it just, like, the facts don't lie. I mean, you can say whatever you want, but people just are not sitting through longer videos. So it would be much better to do two separate 10 minute videos than one 20 minute video anytime. I, I, I can prove it on my stats. So, I, you know, whatever. Um, I just thought I would share that with you. And today's video could uh, could be 23 minutes and five seconds long, and I'm cutting it right here. I'm gonna do the second half later today, so tune in later tonight when you get off work or whatever, because that's the better half, the, the better stuff going on right now. It's all good, I don't care either way. I'm talking with a bunch of my other YouTube friends and we're all dealing with the same shortage here in summer. Summer is weird for a YouTube creator, uh, well an RV creator, because our viewers don't have Wi-Fi. They're out exploring the, the country. They're out traveling and no service and all this. That's awesome, that's great. I'm so excited about that. But it's weird for us because we are still working. We are filming and traveling and editing and uploading at the same rate, but yet I'm seeing more than a 50% drop in revenue. Okay, who cares, Eric? We don't care about how much you make, but it's different. 
it's like that value thing. It's like, but I worked just as hard as I did last month and now I'm making half of what I made. Like, can you sit there and think about what, what hourly wage you make and then the next month make half that for, for no reason, like no real reason. You, you worked just as hard, but you made half of your hourly wage. It's a, YouTube is a strange thing. <laughs> <laughs> for sure uh but i'm keeping this channel alive in the summer i am having a blast in maine and i have something very special to share with you like i said in another 10 minute or so video here coming from maine later tonight so tune in later guys jackson i'll see you tonight bye